Do you know how to accelerate your QA process with AI and Playwright? What is the latest must-try MCP in automation? And why would you ever use reverse mutation testing? Find out in this episode of the Test Guild News Show for the week of April 27th. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. Hey, before we get into the news, I want to thank this week's sponsor, ZapTest AI, an AI-driven platform that can help you supercharge your automation efforts. It's really cool because their intelligent co-pilot generates optimized code snippets, while their planned studio can help you effortlessly streamline your test case management. And what's even better is you can experience the power of AI in action with their risk-free six-month proof of concept, featuring a dedicated Zap expert at no upfront costs. Unlock unparalleled efficiency and ROI in your testing process. Don't wait. Schedule a demo now and see how it can help you improve your test automation efforts using the link down below. First up is all about the new MCP server. What is it for? Check it out. So in this LinkedIn post by Srini, a director of engineering and open source advocate and a major Appium contributor, announced the release of WebDriver Agent MCP Server, a tool designed to simplify the setup process for iOS test automation using Appium. And this was developed by Srini and also Sai. They usually always work in tandem with awesome Appium contributions. But they told me this server automates key steps that were traditionally manual and error prone and building WebDriver agent with Xcode, packaging it into an IPA file and signing it with a mobile provisioning profile. So as you probably know, previously setting up WebDriver agent for real device, iOS testing required manual configuration, often leading to inconsistencies and environment specific failures. This new MCP server is intended to streamline the process making it easier for teams to maintain consistent setups across developers and CI/CD pipelines. And what's great is the tool is also available as an open source project on GitHub under the Appium Test Distribution Organization. And according to the announcement, it is positioned as a major time saver for QA engineers and developers focused on iOS automation. So I think this is really cool because software testers working with iOS real device automation via Appium can now significantly reduce setup time and avoid the common build and signing errors by adopting the WebDriver agent MCP server. And you can find it using the link down below. Next up is the webinar of the week. This is all about accelerating your QA process with AI and Playwright. So software QA teams are facing increasing pressure to keep up with the accelerated pace of modern development that a lot of them find themselves in. So this new webinar scheduled for May 6th at 1 p.m. will address key challenges in maintaining quality while expanding test coverage quickly. Hosted by the Test Guild, Rio, CEO of Audify, will join us for a session that explores how QA processes can struggle in continuous delivery environments and how generative AI combined with Playwright can help streamline testing workflows. So this webinar will cover how AI can be used to expand test coverage without adding strain to QA teams, methods for aligning QA and engineering teams for better collaboration, and a really cool demo. And the demo is going to show how Audify translates natural language and product requirements into maintainable and exportable automated tests. And this event is designed for QA engineers and DevOps professionals looking to speed up test creation, lower maintenance demands, and refocus their teams on high-value initiatives while assuring software quality remains high. Register now using the link down below. Also, a recording will be available for all those who register but can't attend the live session. So even if you can't make it, make sure to register now using the link, once again, down below. Want to know more about Playwright and iOS independent screenshot testing? If so, this next one's for you. So a new article published by Andre outlines a method for performing operating system independent screenshot testing using Playwright in combination with Docker. And this approach addresses a common challenge for software testers, ensuring visual consistency across different environments without being limited by the underlying OS. And the article explains how using Docker containers with a controlled environment helps testers avoid discrepancies caused by differences in operating systems, browsers, or local machine settings. It also includes a practical example with a custom Docker image that installs Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit, allowing Playwright to run tests in a consistent headless setup. It also has step-by-step -step instructions for how to set up the Docker file, installing dependencies, and executing Playwright tests inside the container. And this process enables testers to achieve more reliable, repeatable screenshot comparisons, regardless of whether they're developed on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. The article also emphasizes that this solution is particularly useful 
with teams aiming to integrate visual testing into their CI CD pipelines, where consistent test environments are crucial. All right, so in previous news shows, I covered two posts talking about mutation testing, but I found another one called reverse mutation testing. What is it? Well, let's check it out. And this is by Leandro, an expert in software quality engineering and founder of QA Roots. He introduces the concept of reverse mutation testing in a recent LinkedIn article. His post addresses a critical issue for testers, how to trust tests that have never been seen failing. Leandro explains that typical mutation testing modifies the application code to verify if tests can detect faults. However, reverse mutation testing shifts the focus by mutating the tests themselves Specifically, it involves deliberately breaking test assertions to check if the test fails when it should. If a test still passes after being intentionally altered, it signals a potential weakness. Either the test does not genuinely verify the behavior, or it's not robust enough. He emphasizes that this approach provides a lightweight, practical way to improve test quality without requiring complex tools or setups. It also empowers testers to ensure that each test not only passes under normal conditions, but also fails under abnormal ones, an important aspect often overlooked in many test suites. Kind of reminds me of TDD for automation testing, where you make sure you can see it fail before you see it pass. So this is another cool technique, and you should find out and read more about it using the link down below. This next post is all about an open source AI agent for web automation. So in a recent article published by Tony, he introduces BrowserUse, an open source Python library designed to automate web interactions using natural language commands. So BrowserUse integrates Playwright with large language models, enabling AI agents to browse websites autonomously, clicking, reading, and navigating based on plain English instructions rather than traditionally scripting or XPath selectors. He goes on to explain how BrowserUse addresses the limitation of brittle web automation where minor front-end changes frequently break tests. By handing controls to LLMs and abstracting the technical complexity, browser use allows users to automate common workflows, such as logging into accounts or booking services without deep programming knowledge. The project also highlights a shift towards more agentic AI-driven testing and automation models, offering a potential alternative to QA engineers frustrated with traditional browser automation frameworks. While still involving, browser use is open source and available for developers and testers interested in experimenting with AI-driven web automation. I also found another blog post that talks all about AI-driven DevOps. Let's check it out. So I found this on Adam Sandman's LinkedIn profile, and it talks about how they just announced a new integration of its Spira platform with Amazon Bedrock to enhance quality assurance and compliance in DevOps pipelines. This integration enables Spira tests, Spira team, and Spira plan platforms to leverage Amazon Bedrock's generative AI capabilities. The collaboration focuses on reducing manual efforts, improving test coverage, and simplifying regulatory compliance for organizations operating under strict industry standards. As you know, I'm always on the lookout for new tools, and here's a new one in the security area. This is by Prompt Security, how they've announced the beta launch of Vulnerable Code Scanner. It's a static analysis security testing tool designed specifically for AI-generated code. And this tool aims to automatically scan code suggestions made by AI assistants like ChatGPT or Copilot and Gemini to identify security vulnerabilities before the code is integrated into your application. It also provides actionable recommendations to help developers fix detected issues, helping prevent common risks such as data leaks, exposure of personal information, and insecure coding practices. So we covered a SaaS solution. How about a DAS one? Well, I found another security-related one, and this is by Sneak, who announced the launch of Sneak API and Web. It's a new dynamic application security testing solution. And this was designed to help developers and security teams proactively identify and secure vulnerabilities in APIs and web applications, particularly critical as businesses increasingly deploy generative AI systems. They also have a quote by Katie Norton, who emphasizes that the growing adoption of generative AI heightens the need for more sophisticated API security solutions. All right, for links to the Redneck Valley we covered in this news episode, head on over to all the links down below. So that's it for this episode of the Test Skill News Show. I'm Joe. My mission is to help you succeed in creating end-to-end full-stack pipeline automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.